Dear Professor D'Angelo, I challenge you to a debate on your book, White Fragility, why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism. I'm black. I've lived in white majority societies for nearly three decades. I spent half of that time in the US. I've encountered and developed relationships with white people, not only in America, but also in different parts of Europe, the UK, Canada, and Australia. I have had countless interactions with white people, men, women, children, gay and straight, rich and poor. My husband is white and so are some of my closest friends. I have white people as my colleagues and as my employees. I've interacted with them as classmates. Most of my professors in college were white. I taught white students and worked for different white bosses in diverse settings. Not all my relationships with white people were positive. I served in the Dutch parliament. The political stage in the Netherlands is notorious for the knife in the back skullduggery. I got plenty of those in mind. I have had lawsuits against me, bad press that at times seemed relentless and the occasional nasty documentary made about me. Why is all this relevant? Because in all of this, I don't think I've ever experienced racism. Strange, not to me. And this is why I think you and I should have a debate. I happen to define racism in precisely the way you ask white people not to. I see racism as an individual intentional act of nastiness to a person motivated purely by that person's skin color with the emphasis on intentional. In your book and in various interviews and speeches, you urge white people repeatedly to shift their understanding of racism away from this individual approach to a structural meaning, and I quote you, that recognizes racism as a default system that institutionalizes an unequal distribution of resources and power between white people and people of color. You say that this system is historic, taken for granted, deeply embedded, and it works to the benefit of whites. You insist that racism defined in this structural way is the status quo of all Western cultures and that this status quo is comfortable for white people. I see things differently, at least in three ways. One, as opposed to the views of whiteness scholars, I think that the economic, political, social, and cultural structures of our society do not systematize and perpetuate an unequal distribution of privileges, resources, and power between white people and people of color. Two, that some of the assumptions, methodology, and omissions of key facts and factors in white fragility have led to the wrong conclusions that disparities in income and wealth are the results of systemic racism. And finally, because of these wrong assumptions, the remedies you and other white scholars recommend are going to lead to more racial antagonism and more inequality. I urge you, therefore, to take the time to have this debate with me. My invitation to you is born of a genuine desire for you and me to share our perspective on this important issue. We may not convince one another to change our minds, but at least each of us will learn something and share something valuable for the audience to ponder on. I look forward to having this conversation with you.